it down because you think you're cute. I get so sick and tired of going up and down my Facebook line. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I see pictures like that, I'm going to delete you as my friend. I'm going to block you. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. Your pastor wants to see this. Yeah. Your pastor wants to see this. Because your pastor wants to go here. Yeah. Should women, our sisters in Christ, dressing like whores? Well, let's find out. Welcome, beloved viewers, to today's discussion on a topic that has sparked passionate debates within our Christian communities. Today, we delve into the question of how women, including pastors, should dress when attending or leading church services. As followers of Christ, it is essential to approach this issue with sensitivity, biblical wisdom, and a spirit of love. The church is a sacred space where believers gather to worship and seek God's presence. Dressing modestly reflects respect for this holy environment and acknowledges the sanctity of the worship experience. This is what church has become to. You look on BET, the choirs look like this. Baptist folk, like this. Non-denominational, like this. So-called apostolic, like this. Catholics, like this. It is not about enforcing rigid dress codes, but about fostering an atmosphere that honors God and edifies the congregation. Prominent gospel artists and pastors weighing in on women's dressing in church. Juanita Bynum, a renowned gospel singer, and Gino Jennings, a controversial pastor, have sparked outrage by condemning women who wear revealing clothing to church, labeling it as whorish and provocative. My, my spirit is kind of heavy for several reasons and probably by the time I get off the program today, some of you may unfriend me. What I'm going to minister today is, is purely out of love. My love for you and my love for who God has called you to be. If we're not really, really careful, we will begin to be put in a position where it's almost like we're backpedaling and trying to forward pedal at the same time. Now you can't tell the believers from the unbelievers. Now there is no difference. And I guess I'm just not understanding how pastors can allow people to parade in their churches looking like that. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack of your breasts. Something has gone wrong. Bynum and Jennings argue that such attire disrespects the sanctity of the church and distracts from the worship experience. However, their comments have been met with fierce backlash, with many accusing them of slut-shaming, misogyny, and perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes. Critics argue that women should be able to dress freely without judgment or shame, and that their attire does not define their worth or relationship with God. The debate raises important questions about modesty, personal freedom, and the role of women in the church. As the conversation continues to simmer, it remains to be seen how the religious community will address issues of gender, sexuality, and expression. One thing is certain the controversy has sparked a necessary conversation about the complex intersections of faith, identity, and personal choice. So tight and so short until half of your thighs are out and you're ministering. And I can't even, I can't even get to the concept of somebody preaching and leading praise and worship with no stockings on, with thongy, stringy shoes on, and your legs all greased up. What kind of message are you trying to send us? Because to me, that looked like somebody that's got a whole spirit that ain't purged out in God, and any minute you can just go over in a corner to a deacon and just raise your dress up and hit it right there in the corner because you don't even have drawers on. You got on thongs and some greasy legs and a bip bop skirt and you are praising worship leader? Something is, is absolutely positively wrong with that. And then we wonder why there was so much sexual promiscuity in the body of Christ. And I'm not saying that you got to be like an old foggy woman because I love to look beautiful. But there's a time and a place for it all. 
and Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on, no underwear on? Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more, but have you ever heard of Spanx that keeps you from jiggling like that? And then you won't sit down. You're the person that just won't sit down because you think you're cute. I get so sick and tired of going up and down my Facebook line. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I see pictures like that, I'm going to delete you as my friend. I'm going to block you. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. Because we finally got enough money to buy titties. And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy. Sex appeal is on an all-time high. Not worship, not brokenness, not Lord, here I am. Not God purge me and cleanse me. Where is the scripture that says that women ought to dress in modest apparel with shame face? We're not shame anymore. And there's something wrong when the Holy Ghost in you don't ever say to you, that's too tight. How is it that you don't think it's too tight when it's so tight in the front that you can actually see the print of your really y'all come on and it hurts it hurts because we're the Christians it hurts and we're the Christians and we looking like hoes and we done went body con crazy everything is a body con dress are y'all serious you the women of God and you and you taking pictures with your shoulder all out like this and you and, and you the woman of God you the woman of God and your your chest is all the way down here on Facebook I don't care if you ain't in church who takes a picture like that because you're confusing us because one minute you want to give us the word of the Lord and one minute you want to tell us what God is saying and one minute you want to prophesy and the next minute we see you taking an all out sex picture and a selfie of yourself. I don't care if my spiritual daughters did just disown me. You could unfriend me. You could say whatever you want to say. Because you know what? I didn't sign up for a hoe as a daughter in the first place. So you won't offend me. Get on somewhere with that. Because if we don't raise a standard in the body of Christ. Then where in the world are we going? And I don't care what nobody said. Well, you know what? It, 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 it ain't, it ain't what's, what you wear is what's in your heart. But what's in your heart is testifying. The way you look testifies of what's in your heart. And you think that's how you're going to find a man? Do you think a real man of God won't you? Because if that's what it took to turn him on to you, there's another girl out there that look way better than you. It said, makeup. It's not in the Bible. This is what you church folk look like. One of you brothers give that side for me, will you please? Quickly, please. Come on, brother. Now, you Christians, you have so-called Christian celebrities that look like this. You have some first lady in churches, pastor wives. You look like this. You let your children look like this. You let many of the mothers in the church look like this. You go to so-called Christian concerts and the women look like this. The Bible says. In like manner also. In like manner also. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is so modest? about this what is so modest about this there was a women wrote me when they heard me preach against it and said my pastor don't say nothing I most certainly know he don't your pastor wants to see this yeah your pastor wants to see this because your pastor wants to go here yeah Am I right, I say? Talk to me! Am I right, I say? Amen. Listen! And when thou art spoiled, when you are spoiled, what wilt thou do? What will you do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson. The Bible said you close yourself with crimson. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. What else? 
Though thou rinnest thy face with painting. Your face have what on it? Thou rinnest thy face with painting. You see it? The Bible says. Though thou rinnest thy face with painting. How do God feel about the way this looks? In vain. In what? In vain. What do they do in vain? Thou shalt make thyself fair. You think you look beautiful, but in God's eyes, your fair look is vanity. Vanity. This is what church have become to. You look on BET, the choirs look like this. Baptist folk, like this. Non-denominational, like this. So-called apostolic, like this. Catholics, like this. Give me Leviticus 10, 10. In Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Listen at what the Bible says. That thou shalt put a difference. What did it say? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Turn Williams up, make him louder. Yeah, Leviticus, what is it? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Leviticus 10, 10. I want all my viewers to get this, get this, get this. Call the ones that hate it and say, look at what that crazy Pastor Jennings got on television now. That's right. <laughs> You know why some of you upset? Because this look like your mama. This look like your daughter. This look like your wife. This look like your second wife. This look like the pastor wife. And that's why you upset with me. Because we call a spade a spade. Women pastors hold a significant position of influence within the church. Their attire can set a tone for the congregation and serve as a model for modesty and propriety. By dressing appropriately, women pastors can demonstrate their reverence for God and their role as spiritual leaders. In our modern world, fashion and personal expression are highly valued, but how do these values align with the principles of modesty and respect within the church? Recently, the topic of how women, including pastors, dress for church services has sparked considerable debate. As followers of Christ, it's important to approach this discussion with a heart full of grace, understanding, and a commitment to biblical truth. The Bible guides how Christians should present themselves, emphasizing modesty and respect. In 1 Timothy 2, 9-10, Paul advises, I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds, appropriate for women who profess to worship God. This scripture highlights the importance of focusing on inner beauty and good deeds rather than outward appearances. Women pastors hold a significant position of influence within the church. Their attire can set a tone for the congregation and serve as a model for modesty and propriety. By dressing appropriately, women pastors can demonstrate their reverence for God and their role as spiritual leaders. Titus 2 7-8 encourages leaders to show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech. While it is important to encourage modesty, it is equally crucial to avoid judgment and criticism. Jesus taught us to love one another and refrain from casting stones. John 8, 7. Instead of condemning others for their clothing choices, we should seek to understand their perspectives and gently guide them toward a deeper appreciation of modesty and respect for the church setting. Remember the story of the woman caught in adultery. The Pharisees wanted to condemn her, but Jesus responded with compassion and wisdom. He said, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. This powerful message reminds us to approach others with grace and understanding. To promote modesty effectively, we can take practical steps within our church communities. Here are a few suggestions. Education and dialogue. Church leaders can facilitate discussions and educational sessions about the biblical principles of modesty and the importance of dressing appropriately for worship. Positive reinforcement. Highlight and celebrate examples of modest and respectful attire within the congregation, providing encouragement and inspiration. Leading by example. Women pastors and other church leaders can set a positive example through their attire demonstrating a balance of modesty, professionalism, and personal expression. Creating a welcoming environment, ensure that discussions about attire are conducted with love and sensitivity, fostering a welcoming environment where everyone feels valued and respected. In conclusion, the conversation about women's attire in church, including that of women pastors, should be rooted in love, respect, and a commitment to biblical principles. 
By fostering an environment of modesty and reverence, we honor God and strengthen our community of faith. Both the article and blog post aim to address the issue with sensitivity, emphasizing biblical teachings, the importance of modesty, and the need for compassionate dialogue. A heated debate is sweeping the internet, with prominent gospel artists and pastors weighing in on women's dress in church. Juanita Bynum, a renowned gospel singer, and Gino Jennings, a controversial pastor, have sparked outrage by condemning women who wear revealing clothing to church, labeling it as provocative. Bynum and Jennings argue that such attire disrespects the sanctity of the church and distracts from the worship experience. However, their comments have been met with fierce backlash, with many accusing them of slut-shaming, misogyny, and perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes. Critics argue that women should be able to dress freely without judgment or shame and that their attire does not define their worth or relationship with God. The debate raises important questions about modesty, personal freedom, and the role of women in the church. As the conversation continues to simmer, it remains to be seen how the religious community will address issues of gender, sexuality, and expression. One thing is certain the controversy has sparked a necessary conversation about the complex intersections of faith, identity, and personal choice. Let us remember that our ultimate goal is to glorify God in all that we do, including how we present ourselves in His house. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and guide you in all your ways.